Hello everyone, welcome to the Salesforce CPQ video series. In today's session, we will be covering multi-dimensional coding. My name is Prashant Ambition. I have over 17 years of experience, most of it in the Salesforce area. I hold 15 Salesforce certifications, including application architect and CPQ specialist. Also, I am a trailblazer mentor. My Twitter and LinkedIn details are here. Feel free to follow me or connect with me. In today's session, we will look at what is multidimensional coding. We will go through creating and using MDQ products. And we will also look at some key considerations while using MDQ products. Multidimensional coding or MDQ as it is known allows you to segment a particular product into multiple time segments within a single code on the code line editor. Now, what that means is typically in our what we have seen on our code line, we have a start date and an end date, and there's a single row for a particular code line. And that is a single value of a particular quantity, single value of a price, and so on. What this allows you is to break that down into individual segments, and each segment can have its own quantity and discounts. Also, we can apply some year over year uplifts as we move through these multi dimensional products. One more thing is that once we create the code, there are individual code lines created for each segment. Now, the best way to look at this is go through an example and then see how the setup is done. So let us go to our trial log. So we are in our uh, trial log now and on a sample code, uh, which has been set to a start date of 1-1-2021 and a subscription term of 12 months. Now to understand MDQ products, let me first quickly add a regular product, which we've been looking at in our previous videos. So in this case, I'll pick the Apple smartwatch warranty product. It's a support product. And I select this to add it to my code. And like any other code line you've been seeing, you'll see that there is the value for quantity and uh, there are fees related to price. The key of course, being that there's only one value for the quantity and only one value for the price, which you can have per code line. And uh, this is where you see the difference when you're adding an MDQ product. So let me add an MDQ product to show you how it looks different. Now I'm going to pick this product, which I've set up for uh, high speed internet. And uh, you'll see that the list price is thousand dollars. And just to let you know, this is a subscription product and uh, the subscription term is 12 months. So it actually matches that of the quote. But what I've done is as part of an MDQ product, I've set it up to show it broken down by quarterly segments. So when I add this to the code, you'll see what I mean. Now, immediately you can see the difference, right? Uh, the code line appears here as uh, you would normally see the product names and so on. But after that, you have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, each of $250 and the total being $1,000, which matches the subscription term amount. So this is what really an MDQ product is about. You're actually being able to quote by segmenting uh, across time. Now, one more thing you'll notice for um, the MDQ product we've added is that on the quote line editor, there is a icon here called these segment lines. So if I click on this, it actually removes these segments and makes it make it look like a standard product. So it doesn't have those segments. And if I just re-click on this re-segment lines, it will bring those segments back. As you can see, I've set the subscription term to be 12 months. Let me make this 11 months. And when I make it 11 months, it means obviously what three quarters and instead of the three months in the last quarter, I'll, I'll only have two months. And if I hit on calculate, you can see the 250 has become uh, lesser. So it basically it reduced it by the amount which was there for the one month. If I reduce this further to 10 months, you will see that it again becomes uh, prorated to match one third of that 250 amount. Now, if I make it nine months, obviously now your term has only three quarters. So you will see that the fourth quarter column disappears altogether and you just have a $750 um, total price, right? So the what this segment does is it looks at the overall subscription term and then matches it and breaks it down as needed. And since I've set it up by quarter, it will do it by quarter. Now we have the option to set it up by yearly or monthly as well. 
And then there's another example we look at, we can do it custom where the, the sales rep can actually decide what should be the duration of each segment. I'm going to bring this back to 12 months so that it's easy to follow. So this is the basic setup. Uh, you've got the segments defined. Now, really the magic happens when you open the drawer here. By clicking on this icon, you'll have all your key fields. You can see that the start dates have been set up automatically by quarter. You can see that the quantity by default is set to one for each. You have the, the an uplift percent, percentage which you can apply at each stage. Uh, you can apply a discount uh, again for each quarter. And what the power of MDQ offers is you can actually make these changes by each segment. So if I'm going to say that they're actually increasing the quantity to two on the second quarter, and maybe just keep it at two for third quarter, and by fourth quarter, we'll make it four, these quantities get applied and you'll see that the prices will get updated automatically. So you can see when I made the quantity two, it's $500. And whereas for four, it is $1,000. Additionally, I can increase the rate. I can increase an uplift of say 10% for quarter two. And you'll see that the price going up from 500 to 550. And again, that gets applied because this is year on year, it gets applied uh, for the following quarters as well. If I want to do another uplift, I can do the same. I can also apply discounts. So if I want to apply a discount of 10% uh, for the last quarter, I can do that. And you will see that it's automatically applied that just for that quarter. So what you can see here on the screen is even though I've got a single code line, I have it broken down by different segments based on how I've defined the product. And then now I have the ability to do a lot of granular control. Uh, I'm able to manage this and uh, have this coding done at a more broken down level, which I would not be able to do with a regular product. Now on this particular example, I've only added an MDQ product. I can also add a regular product, which I would have normally picked. So if I go back and add the Apple smartwatch warranty, you'll see it getting added, but you will see that it comes as a separate uh, unit altogether. So the segmented products and what are known as standard products, uh, as you can see here on the code line editor, will be separated out logically. So there's a visual separation between the two. I still have the ability to open this drawer and make the changes I, as I want for the segmented product. Whereas for the standard product, of course, I just have this one place where I can only make the changes and uh, add to my code. So this is how a typical functionality of an MDQ product works in Salesforce CPQ. What we'll now look at is how I've actually set up this uh, high-speed internet product and how is it showing this quarter-wise behavior. And we'll also look at some other examples and additional tweaks we can do for an MDQ product. So if I go over to my products tab and I have this product already open, now this high speed internet product is a regular subscription product. You can see that the pricing method is list. I have a fixed price uh, subscription pricing and the term is for 12 months. The difference is actually in one of the related lists. So if I click here and I scroll down to price dimensions, you'll see this is where our MDQ functionality actually is set up. So let me click on new to show you how uh, the fields are and what data you have to fit in. So the key uh, fields are, are the ones here. First, you have to set a dimension name. So uh, in this case, I put quarterly billing, but you can name it, which makes, uh, makes it easy to understand. You will have a type. This is, this is where you actually define what sort of a segment it should be. So you can see that you have options of year, quarter, month, custom, and one time. So what this is telling C CPQ is that in this product, when I add it to the code line, how do I want my code line to be segmented, whether it should be yearly, quarterly, monthly, or custom. In custom, the user or the sales trip actually gets to define what the particular segment durations and the date stamps would be. And a one time is a separate um, approach where you just do a one time billing. So 
what I've done here for this particular product is set up a quarterly billing. The key thing to note for this particular um, field is that for a particular product, you cannot have more than one type of price dimension. So if I have set up a quarterly billing, if I try to set up something on yearly, so let me just quickly show you what happens. It will throw an error saying you cannot have multiple time-based dimensions on the same product. So this is one limitation or one uh, approach which Salesforce CPQ follows is that you define only one way to segment your uh, product. So you can do it yearly, quarterly, monthly, or you can allow the reps to do it custom. So only any one of these you can pick. The exception to this is the one-time billing. So for example, we had, uh, we're talking about uh, internet, right? Uh, having an high speed internet as a product and trying to break that down by quarterly. If we have like a, a one-time installation charge, so I'm going to set this up like right now, installation charge, or, and I just want to do this one time and not have it broken down. It just shows as a, a, a once charge. I can I can set it up and this, it will allow. Uh, so that's that's the only exception. Whereas if you have chosen one of the other four, uh, you have to stick with that. You cannot have uh, any combinations. The next field here is the price book. So you can associate this price dimension to a specific price book. And also in the following field, you can associate to a currency. Uh, the currency, of course, becomes important and very relevant when you are using multi-currency in your org. So when you do that, you can have a new price dimension set up for different currencies. So this can be for US dollars, another one can be for another currency you've set up. Of course, the key thing to remember is if you've set up something like a yearly, quarterly, monthly, or custom, you can only use the same value for each of the currencies unless you're doing one type. There are also a few other fields here which are, uh, for example, as you can see, quantity editable, default quantity, quantity scale, um, also a few others. And many of these are actually have a default value of inherit. Um, so this means uh, the value, the functionality around, say, a quantity being editable or a price being editable, uh, it inherits from the product. You also have the option to override it by setting it to a yes or no. Now, in typical use cases, you would uh, rarely see that. Typically, what we've seen in implementations is that even for MDQ products, you would go with inheriting what is there at the product. So another field here is unit price. Now, this is where you can actually define a price uh, for the MDQ product when you're using this price dimension. And if you're using uh, any of the segments like yearly, monthly, or so on, you want to make sure that you're setting the unit price which matches the subscription term for that particular product. So if you have a product which is which is a subscription term of 12 months and you're setting a unit price here, you have to remember that the unit price is for that 12 month duration. So you are actually going to use this price instead of the list price in the, in the price book when actually quoting. So that's a small thing to note. Of course, if you're doing a one-time billing in this case, it just applies one time. It's, it's really relevant more from a one-time charge perspective and not from a subscription perspective. And actually, as we mentioned that, let me add a one-time installation charge of say $150. Again, the currency you remember is defined here for this same product. And I'm going to save this price dimension. In this scenario, you will see that it has uh, allowed me to save this. So for the product now, it has a quarterly billing and uh, one-time installation charge as well. So what this means is uh, when I code this, I'll get an initial charge of 150 and then I'll be able to do a MDQ behavior for uh, quarter wise. Let me quickly show you that. Um, so I'm going to go back to the code. We will uh, delete the product lines we have right now. We'll go back and uh, re-add the same product. So as I select this, you will see we have our quarterly $250 as we've, we saw but you'll see there's an additional column here for an installation charge of $150. So that's the one-time billing which we which we created here. And uh, let me scroll down and open this drawer and you can see that this is again set up. I can again update um, the quantity and discount and so on even for the one-time installation charge as I can do for the others, but this doesn't get repeated because it's, it's just happening in the initial setup. So this is how that uh, one-time price dimension works. Uh, 
Now, as you can see, and as I was demoing this, it, it does take a little bit of effort to scroll through this. So one of the key considerations when you're using MDQ products is, is the real estate it'll use. It'll start using up your screen space. You may have to zoom out, really see everything in, in one particular screen. But of course, it gives you the flexibility to do all this coding in, in different levels. Let me also um, give you another example of a product which I'd used where uh, we are doing custom segmentation. So I'm going to add this product here. And this is custom subscription. Let me quickly show you the product first, actually. Um, so this is a similar subscription product where if I go to the price dimension, I have used the type as custom. I am not I'm not filled in any of the other fields or so not set a price, for example, but this is a custom dimension and the price is US dollars. Uh, so when I add this to the quote and I select this, you'll see that it has been added, but it doesn't have the different segments set up. But what you will see here is like a pencil icon in the top left uh, area here. And if I click on this, you will see I'm able to define date ranges. So I can add as many ranges as I want. So for example, if I pick this and let's say this goes till end of June. Uh, so we'll pick this from 1st of July. I think it's 2020, that should be 1st of July 21. And we will, let's say this goes for end of November, for example. And we take this from 1st of December till, and I'm going to type this out because it's just easier. And I can label the segments as well. So let's say this is phase one. Phase two, phase three. I can name them as I wish and I save this. Oops, you can see I made an error here, which it's uh, prompting me. Uh, I should have made sure that the dates are aligned and I got the year wrong here. So these are small checks it does, but you do want to make sure that your start date and end date match as needed and you're not leaving any gaps. Um, there are some checks and balance which the system itself will do. So as I save this, you'll see that uh, I've got the segments aligned here. And of course you will note that it has also applied proration, right? So we know that this is a thousand dollar product, which is uh, has a subscription term of 12 months. The first phase uh, was from Jan 1st to end of June. So it was six months. So really half the year, uh, six months out of 12, we got for $500. And then this was for five months and the last one for one month. So it's applied the proration as it uh, would have done for any subscription product. Uh, and again, instead of it being in separate quote lines, this is all in one quote line broken down by segments defined by the sales rep. Uh, it still has the functionality where you can make changes to your quantity or uplift or discount as you, as you would see fit. Um, but the real flexibility is where you can actually go and define the segments as you would like. Again, this is a this is really based on your business use case, how you would uh, sell your products, how you want the sales reps to be able to manage the coding. Uh, there are scenarios where you want to predefine your segments and there are scenarios, of course, where you want to give the full free hand to the sales reps to be able to define their segments themselves. So that's how our MDQ product would work when we set the price dimension to be of custom type. Now, as you saw that MDQ products are very powerful. They offer a lot of flexibility. However, when you're using them, there are some important considerations to be aware of. The first thing is that when you're quoting, you need to have a start date. Without the start date, the MDQ quote line prices will not calculate correctly, especially if, if you see the scenario where proration is being applied. You will see a lot of incorrect data. Also, MDQ products support only month-based subscription term units. Next one is very important. MDQ products cannot be parent bundles, which means you cannot have product options associated with them. They have to be either standalone products or they can be a child option of another standard 
bundle parent. Now, if it is a child option, what will happen is when you're quoting, the bundle parent will appear as a standard product table, while the MDQ product will be separated out in a segmented table. It will have a link which you can, which it will refer back to the original bundle it was tied with, but it will be separated out visually. Also, if your MDQ product is set as a child option and it is set to be a component, its quantity would be independent of the parent bundle and you will be able to change the quantity. It will not do a multiplication of the parent bundle quantity natively. It will be completely separate. And uh, also MDQ products cannot be configured and hence that means we cannot have configuration attributes tied to them either. A few other considerations to note. From a user experience perspective, we need to really think about how we are setting up MDQ products. If we have price dimensions set up at like a monthly level, there could be a scenario where you can, where you can end up having a large number of segments. Also, if you have custom or partial dates with multiple MDQ products, the user experience will be a little clunky. Now this applies both from a code line editor perspective and also if you're looking at from a code document perspective. So I can keep this in mind uh, when you're looking at configuring this and how the typical use cases of this will be applied when a sales step is quoting. One important thing to note is that contracting also works slightly differently for MDQ products. So let's take an example. If you have an MDQ product segmented out at an yearly level, so you can see from Jan 1st, 2021 to 31st December 2021, and then for 2022 and 2023. And for the first one, we have five units, second 10 units, and third 20 units. So typical example of how an MDQ product may be set up when segmented by year. Now, when this is contracted, the subscriptions which are created will be slightly different. What happens is Salesforce CPQ will first create a subscription which starts from the first date of the first segment, which is 1st Jan 2021, to the last date of the last segment, which is 31st December 2023. And it will take the units which are applicable for that first segment, so five units. So it looks at five units being applied across the entire time period. The next subscription starts from the second segment and it starts from the start date of the second segment that is 1st Jan 2022 till the end of the last segment that is 31st December 2023. And what it does is tries to match the number of units it needs in the second segment. So you'll remember in the first subscription, subscription we already added five units. And now for the second segment to have 10 units, we need to add an additional five units. So the second subscription will only show five units. And similarly for the third subscription, which looks at only the last segment, what it will do is try to match the 20 units for the third segment. Now, if you look at the first two subscriptions, they cover 10 units between them, five units and five units. Whereas in the last segment, we need to get 20 units. To match that, the last subscription will add 10 units as part of its uh, quantity. So that's it for this session. We went through uh, what a typical MDQ product look like, looks like and how it's set up. What are the use cases and some important considerations. I hope you found this session useful. Thank you so much for listening in. Thank you Apex for giving us the opportunity to host this session.